Hello all, it's Todd here, and today we are at a cool historic site, the Guilford Courthouse National Military Park. A major battle was fought here during the Revolutionary War in 1781, and I wanted to take you on this awesome tour. So if you've never come, definitely come when you're in North Carolina. If you're from out of the country, I do encourage you to visit this site as well to learn a little history of this area in North Carolina. All right, guys, let's go check it out. And here's the entranceway to the battlefield. It's right outside of Greensboro, so not too far away. And um, you're gonna see a ton of these historic placards scattered throughout this battlefield. Um, it was pretty major conflict. Uh, they had I think just over 4,000 militia and some colonials, of course, were involved. Uh, and then, of course, a little over 1,500 British troops engaged. Uh, this, of course, all at one time was farmland and, of course, woods. And kind of do a little panoramic here. And you're going to see a lot of uh, statues and monuments scattered about where certain things happened during this battle. And here's the visitor center. Cool museum inside there. Uh, we'll definitely try to check that out if they're open today. Uh, we're still in the um, COVID, but I think they are opening more things. So hopefully that'll open up in just a little bit. So, all right guys, let's go in uh, explore and check out the Guilford Courthouse National Military Park. And like I said, it's, it's a pretty major battlefield area and uh, so there's a lot to see so we'll cover as much as we can and the time we have like i said here's some you know, you're gonna get cool monuments and statues all through here so it's beautiful through here and it looks like a lot of the there's people who live close by so they'll walk their dog so this is like a great place for them to uh take their dogs and walk them or just go on a uh, a nice walk and it looks it looks like a uh, a burial area of uh, one of the uh, soldiers major john daves it looks like he is uh, buried here and died during the battle so yeah <clears throat> so you may see a lot of these there's the epitaph there like i said you can if you can stop it and read it it is kind of faded away but um so yeah you got uh you'll probably see some of these laying around in their resting place for various soldiers here's monument row and the picture you see here is actually of an old postcard and it looks like they had these cool monuments here but they are no longer there that's too bad because they look really cool um so, yeah, here it is now, Monument Row. We'll walk this way. They have some cool cutouts here, kind of the soldiers running through the woods during the battle, kind of give you an idea of the terrain they were dealing with at the time of the conflict. So we're gonna head that way. Okay, so we're walking. It's a windy day. It's cold, man. It's 30. Six, I think 36 degrees. So hopefully it'll warm up. The sun's coming out, so that's good. Um, we're heading this way. We'll cross this road here to check out this cool monument, and we'll see what happened over here. And it's a beautiful, beautiful historic park. And with all the years that I've lived here, I have never been here. And I've always wanted to come experience this. So, and as you saw, uh, let's see, we'll see, like you get a, you get a look because you're going to find monuments, you know, placards like this. Um, that's pretty cool. Patriotic uh, commemoration of the visit of George Washington on this tour of the southern states in 1791. That's pretty neat. Um, it's cool the old fencing here so there's more parking across the street too over there and there's a lot of people out and about so all right let's continue 
So what I'll do too is I'll in the description I'll have everything pertaining to this uh, historic site in battle. Also how to get here, where it's located in the description. So please check that out. And uh, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. I love historic sites like this. I love sharing this for you know to you guys so you can see what happened uh, here. And uh, come experience this. This is pretty awesome. You can really feel the energy too. It's pretty awesome. The uh, just you knew something happened here when you when you come here. Uh, something pretty amazing as far as what happened. Uh, the birth of a nation, basically. Cornwallis was here. Nathaniel Green, who was part of the general of the colonial forces, he kind of baited them in this area. You had all kinds of interesting forces that you know participated in this battle. So, yeah, it, a lot of famous names were involved. So, okay, let's go check this monument out. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. We'll go up to it and check it out. This is awesome. This is pretty cool. It's just the three North Carolinians who signed the Declaration of Independence. William Hooper, Joseph Hughes, John Penn. And there's the statue in commemoration. Let's see. And like I said, uh, if you want to read it, pause it and uh, kind of get right close to it so you can see that. So yeah, pause it if you want to read the plaque. And there he is, Nathaniel Green. That is a cool, cool monument to him. Wow, the details, the sculpt is amazing. And it looks like below, it does show some of his participations uh, in different uh, battles that he participated in. There you go here. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Major General Nathaniel Green. That is so cool. Wow. Yeah, those are, yeah, all the major conflicts, things he participated in during the Revolutionary War. And you've got uh, this on the bottom here. So if you want to read that too. And it wasn't long after that uh, this moved on to uh, end the conflict for the British in the Battle of Yorktown not too long after this. So, very cool. Yeah, wow. Let's get another look at that there of uh, Major General Nathaniel Green. And this beautiful statue here, almost looks like a Greek goddess. And then you have the plaque here of what uh, transpired. Very cool. And like I said, be sure to pause it. Let me see if I can get close enough for you to read it. Yeah, so there you go. It is a lot. It's it's a, uh, just a, a beautiful plaque commemorating what happened here. So the statue itself was dedicated on July 3rd, 1915. Uh, again, some more information. Sculpted by Francis H. Packer. This is a statue of Joseph M. Moorhead. He actually, um, if you saw the last plaque, was one of the original founders of the park to help preserve it for history's sake and uh, so we can enjoy this beautiful area. Thanks to him, we can come here and uh, enjoy these wonderful trails and learn a lot of history about what happened at the uh, Guilford Military Park and what transpired. 
So it's great that uh, these guys did this a long time ago. So yeah, preserving and remembering our history is definitely important to do. So, you know, conservationists and, and historians and philanthropists, what they give to society will be remembered, you know, throughout our life and many generations. So it's important to remember these things and preserve it for our future. So good or bad, we still have to remember things that have happened and transpired and that we don't repeat those things. So, but with this, the birth of a nation transpired here. This is uh, one of the major turning points of history in America. So we'll continue down this way and uh, see more of this beautiful park and history. It's a beautiful area. These trails are well maintained. It's just a beautiful park. And uh, looks like just a major area. A lot of this was opened at one time as far as back then when the conflict occurred. Um, there were certain areas that just a lot of this was field with woods around it so it was a, it was an open conflict as well so but uh yeah they they really i love this they just do a great job of taking care of these parks and they're it's beautiful so here we go here's another the delaware continentals so gives you an idea of the uniforms they wore out here so and again, now see this, you may still find artifacts out here. Who knows? It looks like they have found stuff out here. So no telling what you could find while you're out and about. I'm sure it's been gone through many times, but you just never know. And here's a chance to read some more historical markers. And there's some more markers over here. We'll check those out too. And of course, the, the date of the conflict, March 15th. 1781 so we're not too far from the anniversary actually we passed it but uh, uh it says thursday so we'll have to find out what happened here and um as far as if this is, is this where it began you know um they don't really say on here a lot of, or a lot of it's faded out yeah it doesn't say so oh here we go let's see what that is oh rest here three cotton uh Continental soldiers rest here. So three soldiers are buried here who participated participated in the fight. Rest in peace, my friends. Um, so there probably there's bound to be markers all through here of soldiers who are buried throughout the battlefield. So another monument here of Maryland's tribute to her heroic dead erected by members of the Maryland Historical Society in memory of the soldiers of the Maryland line so when you're out here on the battlefield I mean you are walking on hallowed ground too because there are soldiers both on both sides that are buried out here British and uh, Continentals um, you have to remember too they they weren't americans at that time it was pretty much they were still british citizens so it was british versus british and uh uh yeah so we always say people say you know american versus britain no it was british against british so remember that it, at that point we had not switched over we were fully independent just yet so yeah it was it was brother against brother man so let's head on down here and see more of the battlefield the wind's blowing I don't know if you can hear it listen to the tree man it's crackling like crazy I don't know if you can hear it or not yeah you can hear that tree just crackling from the wind I mean, yeah, check all these trees that are down through here yeah so we're, we're gonna we're gonna get off the trail here and uh, get away from these trees.
just imagine all this opened up open battlefield through here you can really feel the energy here as far as uh, what had happened still lingers here you'll know what I mean when you come it's sort of like that Gettysburg feel if you ever go to Gettysburg um, their spirits still walking around here man they've definitely had sightings of uh, ghosts you can only imagine a lot of these guys this was what the last things they saw here in North Carolina was this area where they lost their lives and uh, sacrificed yeah and here are some of the uh, commanders with General Charles O'Hare and of course the British commander, Lord Cornwallis, who came to this site. So, yeah, of course the British were well disciplined and well trained. And um, it was a major conflict for sure. So, yeah, a lot of these guys are, uh, a lot of the, the uh, Colonials just a lot of them weren't uh, prepared for this battle. It was a two and a half hour battle, and 29 of the 100, 100 uh, British officers were killed here. Um, they did capture the ground, but uh, yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> so here's an overview. We're on top of the hill here, overlooking the battlefield here. And then you've also got a monument here. Also commemorating uh, Green's regulars that fought in the battle as well. This was the third line. So they were all over the place. And they do have reenactments, I think, during the summer. If uh, you go to their site, and again, I'll post stuff on the uh, description, and you can find out when they actually have events here, and uh, when things get a little bit back to normal, and come out here and check this out. It's uh, just a wonderful place to walk to, but you also just, I mean, yeah, to make sure you stop by the plaques and... Uh, read up on uh, different areas of what happened here okay so we're going to continue down this pathway yeah compared to uh elements the battle of elements and king's mountain this was a major major conflict um in the south and yeah the, the both forces were huge and um yeah, so it was only two and a half hours or so. And uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, conflicts like that, that's usually what it is, man. It could be minutes, it could be hours, it can be days, really depending on the, the forces and the tactics that are being used. So, yeah, so, all right, we'll continue down this pathway. Okay, seeing here, this site was occupied by the 1st Virginia Cavalry under Lieutenant Colonel William Washington um, of the Continental Line. And it was uh, here, Captain Griffin, and I can't make out something Leroy, sorry about that guys, uh, First Virginia Lieutenant of the Dragoons Continental Line uh, was mortally wounded right here on March 15th, 1781. He was born in September 28th, 1754 in Virginia yeah I'm trying to get y'all you know all the different perspectives of this area it's a nice little incline here going up this way a batch of mums there uh, a lot of clovers over here out to be a nice day 
sun's coming out. Hopefully gonna warm up soon. Okay, so we're gonna be on top of that hill you saw the opposite side of. Different vantage point of this battlefield up here. Another monument commemorating the battle. Let's see if they got a plaque on here too. Here we go. There you go. Yeah, that's very cool. So this will give you a different perspective. We were way over there on the other side through those trees. And it came down here. So if you're up here, you definitely had a higher ground and an awesome vantage point of what was happening. And this will give you a, a topical map of the area. So you can see where we are here, of course. And um, you can read, it's called Legend versus Reality. So if you want to read, let me get over here, see if you can see that. Pause that so you can read what it's saying. So if you look here, um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go over here too. I don't know if you see my shadow. So <laughs> there's the courthouse here. So we're over here. So we'll head that way. And of course, you can see the American second line, American first line. So it kind of gives you a perspective. Um, and there's the American third line. So yeah, they etched back and back during the conflict. So yeah, so let's head towards the courthouse area. So the pathways to where you want to go are pretty well marked. Uh, a lot of it's paved, so that's nice. And uh, there's other parking too. Let me show you this over here. So if you don't want to park where I parked, I parked over near the visitor center, you can drive through the park and park in different areas like here. So you won't have a crazy walk you'll have to go through to get where you're going. But yeah, you can drive through the park and park at different uh, locations of the uh, battleground of the park. So. Yeah, we're gonna head down this way to get closer to the courthouse. So we are a good distance from the visitor center. Good thing is, if you're way out here near the, the old side of the courthouse, there is a place, a restroom here. And uh, so it's a good thing. Yeah, you're, you're a good distance away from the visitor center. So, um, but here, back country courthouse. So it looked like an old log cabin um, that was out here at one time. So if you want to, let me zoom up a little bit here. If you need to and you want to read the placard, definitely pause it and you can read it. So, but yeah, this was the location of the courthouse at one time. This is where the Continental Army and militia met. So there's some structures over there. We'll go check that out, but we'll go this way. There are some cool things in the woods <laughs> that I spotted on the way up here that you would probably miss if the leaves were on the trees. Um, that's probably the only way I saw these uh, sitting out here in the middle of the woods. We'll go check that out. So again, here's another placard here. So this is the third line trail. Evidently, they've done more research and found that this was the area a contested area where they had a fierce fight. It looks like the Maryland and Delaware Continentals were here fighting along this ridge. So we'll walk back in here. I'm going to show you this too. We'll go along this trail here. It is higher ground that I'm noticing. Um, there's like a little gully down that way. So they had a, the British troops would have had to uh, traverse up this way to engage these troops the maryland and delaware troops that were up here so look down here isn't that cool um so when i was driving up 
you got these three pound uh, cannons this would have been the Continental Forces uh, area where they would occupy as the British troops were coming up the hill here it goes in a circle so we'll definitely go around um, that's pretty awesome that they're out here and here's a here you go here and these cannons were look like they were pretty mobile too so they'd be hooked up quickly and moved across the battlefield to get a better shot at the uh, pursuing troops the British troops that were coming towards them so they would maneuver these all through the uh, battlefield so of course yeah so if you notice the solid shot grape shot and canisters uh, so they did deploy smoke too to uh, hide movements but uh, yeah that grape shot would not be fun solid shot too uh, depending how they were lined up and fighting so they probably I'm sure they probably use these still for reenactment check it out beautiful the detailing on that wow that is awesome and they have the markings on here too I guess where they were made it says 1755 check out the markings on it that is pretty awesome um, they, don't look, they look British markings you got one over here too so yeah I'm sure during reenactment these are, are used there's your flint near you set it off wow fantastic so we're, we're gonna go in a circle cannons there look just so awesome sitting there out in the middle of the woods this right here gives you an idea of what the terrain would have looked like here like I said of course all these woods weren't here at the time so and again you can uh, pause it if you wish to read the placard here okay so we will continue okay so we are inside the museum this is a three pounder cannon right here kind of resembles the ones that they would have used and we're going to go inside the actual museum let's head on in and again the battle itself was March 15th 1781 and along here you're going to of course see the life and times of this area too and uh, some of the artifacts from this area that's very cool check that out personal hygiene lighter there yeah, that's very cool love it when you display, display these things yeah this is really neat so yeah take your time going through and reading up on uh, these different uh, sparks of history in this area and what happened during the, during the Revolutionary War there's a power powder horn check out the engraving on that that is awesome things in great shape too beautiful check that sword out hunting sword carried by lieutenant it's like Catter Parker or Cater Parker. That is neat. Love these artifacts. Oh, check that out. There's your, there's your cannonball from the Battle of Charlotte, where we live. Very cool. 1780. Of course, I don't, they don't have the video running right now. There's another sword here. Saber William Parker nice so here you go so here's your different uniforms hopefully i'm not too muffled i have to wear the mask of course check that out kind of the common man suit there 
probably what the, a lot of the militia would have worn. You know, a lot of the different artifacts that they would have carried, had with them. There's your Continental uniform there. There's one of your British private uniform. And yes, the ladies participated too back then. They weren't sitting back on their butts. They were involved. They did a lot during the war, for sure. So, yeah, they were, they were part of this, so most definitely. And there's another saber, some epaulets down there. Very cool. Gold battalion epaulets. Very neat. And like I say, just take your time. Stop by and read these. There's Tarleton there. Battle of New Garden. Check out that flintlock there and sword. Lieutenant Colonel Henry Lee. Very nice. Pan around here. Here's some of the uh, here are the art some of the artifacts from the uh, battle. Very cool. Check out these sabers. That is so awesome. There's a halibird top of one anyway. That is so cool. Look at the pikes. I guess those were definitely used by the horsemen too. Or also against the cavalry. So vice versa. Check out the muskets and some of the flintlocks. Here's some of the cannonballs. Very nice. It's a British uh, powder horn. And then there's the American powder horn right next to it. Very cool. And some of the saddlebags. Some of the powder horns there. Bayonets. Here's some of the drums here and the flute. So you had, yeah. So you had your your guys here um, with the drums and fife playing during, before and during the battle. And we'll walk this way. And like I said, they do have uh, reenactments. Oh, there you go. There's a cannon. British. That's for a three pounder. Manufactured in Scotland in 1776. And like I said, they, yeah, they have reenactments of the battle here. And I will post those on the description. Here's kind of your timeline of the battle here. Who was where. Some more cool photos of re the uh, reenactors. And so it looks like, uh, yeah, right now the videos aren't running right now. But here's some more artifacts. Oh, here you go. Who fought here? Of course, Nathaniel Green was the commanding officer for the uh, Colonials. So you have Colonials. Looks like British here. So, yeah, these are all the officers. Major players during the uh, battle. And check this out. Musket balls. Cannon balls that were found here. More artifacts. They're probably still finding stuff out there, considering how many participated in the battle. That is so cool. And again, just take your time. No rush. I mean, I'm, I'm the only person in the uh, museum right now. Um, Peter Francisco, the legendary soldier, colonial soldier. So shoe. Very cool. Look at the, look at the uh, grooming tools. The razors. Isn't that awesome? The button there. Some of the artifacts here. Kind of a personal box of his. With his goods. There's an old Bible. 1770. Book of Common Prayer. Very neat. Yeah, it's just cool that they found all this stuff. Surgeon's instruments. And 
and if you're a an outlander fan i'm just wondering if uh they'll have this in one of the storylines because of claire and jamie living in north carolina i mean they already participated there's george right there in the show they already participated in the elements county battle yeah this would be a cool major conflict to have in the series would be the uh guilford uh, battle here and here's the theater here check out the uh the pictures kind of different depictions of what happened yeah these are cool over here on the wall here oh, there you go Put the glare off of there some hand-to-hand -hand conflict there and there's the calvary clash of sabers so you're both having the uh, colonial dragoon forces clashing with the cavalry of the british forces well there's some hand-to-hand -hand happen along here too definitely not uh, something you want to wake up to and participate in very dangerous of course and right now the, the theater is closed so that's understandable and yes they do have restrooms so this is the park way that you can drive through the uh, through the historic area of the uh, Guilford courthouse it uh, runs in a huge circle you can pretty much pop onto it and just watch both ways make sure no one's riding their bikes across the trail there so definitely and take your time um, go very slow there are people walking along the trails and the roadway um, yeah a lot of uh, action happened along here in this trailway as far as the battle goes and um, it is pet friendly so you can bring your dogs and um, I'm gonna go over here and look so yeah so here's there was a lot of action through here of course at that time this was open field <laughs> pretty much farmland um, back then so, and again, here you go here. So, like I was saying earlier, you can park along certain areas of the uh, historic sites. You got placards over there, too. Um, so, you get all kinds of cool stops. So, this was a seedling from a Liberty Oak tree during the Revolutionary War. That was here. They planted it in 1987. And that was the, uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution. There you go. So it's sort of like a liberty tree. A lot of towns would put in and commemorating what took place. And, uh, but yeah, I actually thought there were, there were like a lot of cabin over here, but no, it's actually residential uh, beyond the perimeter. So, but yeah, there's great trails back in here of the park so but yeah a lot of action happened here long ago and uh just the beautiful trails and scenery so yeah definitely take the time and come here and see this magnificent national park military park so i wanted to thank you guys for joining me here at the guilford courthouse the national battle uh, military battleground it's awesome and again check your uh, the description below i'll have the entire you know history of what happened here but also directions uh and also links so you can find and see if there's going to be any reenactments going on this summer hopefully there will be uh, i've been to them at different parks like king's mountain uh cow pen stuff like that they they have reenactments of the actual battle so hopefully they'll have it here this year it's great to come and see that and have a picnic here uh, uh, bring the family bring your dog looks like it's very pet friendly out here so but yeah please like and subscribe I appreciate you going on my little journey here 
and seeing some of the history of North Carolina. There'll be more coming soon. So you guys take care and we'll talk to you soon. And some, some more stuff's coming up really soon. Okay, so stay tuned. You guys take care. Bye-bye.